Welcome to the introduction of a very significant series, which I'm sure can be made to succeed tremendously for the sake of our country. If all of you participate in it with the seriousness and sense of purpose it deserves. I am delighted, ladies and gentlemen, to announce a new series called Jen Ki Bat. Please note, Jen Ki Bat. Matters concerning the people or what people have to say, what the people of India have to say. Why do I initiate this program? For the last several years, we have been having a series called Man Ki Bat. That is to say, what the Prime Minister has to say to the people of India. In principle, it is a laudable program. It's good for the Prime Minister to be in touch with the people. The people of this country respect their leaders, as indeed they must. They are keen to know what the leaders think about the affairs of the nation. They are also happy to receive wise counsel and guidance GPS from lost. those who have the ability to provide such guidelines or guidance, as indeed the Prime Minister, by virtue of his rich experiences and expertise, uh, is in a position to provide. So, I congratulate the Prime Minister for thinking up such a possibility and implementing it with such meticulous care and commendable efficiency. While this is right and proper, we still need to take note of a very serious lacuna, a serious deficiency, a huge gap that needs to be filled. All of us agree readily that democracy is predicated on dialogue, not monologue. Dialogue is the very essence of democracy. What is dialogue? Dialogue is an active and free flow of opinion and experience between two parties or two blocks. In the context of governance, it must be a dialogue, an ongoing dialogue between the government and the people. For after all, democracy is proverbially defined as the government of the people, by the people, for the people. The common denominator of this definition is people, not the prime minister, not the cabinet, not the parliament, not the judiciary, not the bureauc bureaucracy. It's the people and all the various categories of authorities that I've just mentioned exercise their authority on behalf of the people. So if it's a genuine democracy, two things are necessary. There must be a free flow of opinion from the centers of governance, such as the prime ministries, and he holds the highest office in the country. And to the extent that he does so, he has every right and, in fact, I would say the duty to communicate with the people of India. But communication, if you know the root meaning of the word, is to hold together. To communicate is to hold together. The fact that a leader finds time to say a few words or say many words, spread over a long period of time, every month, once every month, it's a good thing, but it's not adequate. What I propose to address is the other side of the equation, or the other side of the dialogue. The Prime Minister, characteristically, has created a medium of communication which is heavily distinguished by a one-directional flow. He is the fountain head of all wisdom. He is the source of all knowledge. And he is in a position to enlighten the people of India, about which I really don't have absolutely any problem as such. But my argument is that that doesn't complete 
the logic of a dialogue. You can't have a dialogue which is one-sided and one-sided dialogue is called monologue. And monologue is not of the essence of democracy. So the prime minister has done his best and I have no uh, basis to distrust uh, his good intentions. And, and I appreciate the fact that he finds the time to sustain this program and has done so for such a long period of time, very commendable indeed. But it's our duty, therefore, to complete the other side of the equation. An equation, you know, has two, two parts. Equation on the left side, uh, the part on the left side, the part on the right side. Democracy is an equation. Democracy is a dialogue. It takes two parties in a state of continuous exchange of free flow of ideas. But the monkey bath format that the Prime Minister has created is only uh, one side of the equation. Good, let's cherish it. Very nice. But let's also provide the other side of the equation so that it becomes an equation. One half of the equation is no equation. One side of the dialogue is no dialogue. So let's create a dialogue of democracy, which is part of the dance of democracy. Uh, that expression comes alive once in five years when the elections are announced. The dance of democracy, the dance of democracy. I've of, 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 often and always wondered why it is that democracy <coughs> forgets to dance for five long years and then suddenly wakes up <coughs> from its long artistic slumber and begins to dance. I, mean, I find uh, this, this phenomenon pretty amusing. <coughs> the dance of democracy must continue. <coughs> we must dare to say, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> that governance also must be part of the dance of democracy. The interaction among people, the, ex the, uh, the interface between uh, the uh, various echelons of the government with the citizens, education, cultural activities, everything, some, the sum total of uh, the nation's life must participate in this dance of democracy. The, the dance of democracy as a five-yearly ritual lasting a few weeks is a mockery of the concept of democracy and I'm pretty convinced about it. So, as citizens, we have to do something. Unfortunately, in the last seven decades and more, Indian citizens have become very passive. There is no point in saying that we have been made passive. No, nobody can make you passive. You become passive of your own choice. And in fact, you choose such people as your leaders who make you passive. And therefore, you can't shirk your responsibility in having become passive. And a passive people deserve nothing, absolutely nothing. Passivity is a form of sloth or laziness. If you're, if you're a lazy student, you do not merit high results in the examinations. If you're a lazy person and if, uh, or a lazy worker in the workplace, you don't deserve promotion. If you're lazy all through your life, you don't, you don't deserve any distinction. There's no award for laziness. So passivity is a form of laziness. And laziness is good only to fritter away the possibilities, the brilliant, beautiful, exciting possibilities in your life. Therefore, I have said this much so far only to bring to the logic of what we propose to do. The, from today onwards, we initiate a program called Gen Ki Baat. We have only a very limited medium, which is the small YouTube channel, if you like. But we can turn it into a meaningful experience. I would urge every one of the active participants in this YouTube fellowship, YouTube Sangamam, to identify issues that really bother them, issues that in their opinion must merit the attention of those who are in the business of governing this country, to study that particular issue and to make a presentation. You can do that in the form of a 12, 15, 20 minutes video and send it to me in any form, in any way you can. And I'll be very happy to upload it onto this channel with such introductions to the particular video as I might think is necessary. Uh, often there, uh, no introduction may be necessary, but in case 
I think that a little bit of introduction is required. I'm happy to provide that. Now, what will happen is that if we can actually take this exercise seriously and begin to apply our mind, two things will happen. One, we will send a very healthy, democratic idea to the country at large that citizens need to become active rather than passive and that they have the ability to reflect rationally and factually on affairs concerning their own welfare and the progress and the future of the country. That way, every citizen becomes a responsible citizen who is keen and happy to participate in this wonderful dynamic of developing a healthy democracy and a healthy, prosperous nation. So that's the first part. The second part is that by doing so, we will make up for a huge, huge lacuna that's afflicting India as a whole. And that is the complete demise, the total death of the media in this country. Journalism is long dead. Journalism doesn't exist. Journalism worth the name doesn't exist anymore. Already, if a vast majority of the people in this country have left mainstream media, both print and electronic, they're sick and tired of it. And they have graduated, they have migrated to social media sites. I myself have done it. In the recently concluded elections, at least from the time the elections were announced by the Election Commission of India, I have been watching mainly social media sites because the reports carried by them or made available by them, by the social media, uh, uh, media sites, they were far more sensitive to the ground realities far more accurate in reflecting the national scenario than any of the so-called prestigious national you know, channel, national channel, national channel. It's utter nonsense. I mean, they can go on you know, claiming to be national channels, national channels. They're empty of substance. Nobody looks up to them. Nobody trusts them anymore. People, people would rather trust a um, lowly social media site a YouTube channel, a YouTube channel run by just one individual, a hundred times more than this big national channel, you know, televisions, etc., etc., which most people today hold in utter contempt. People have even stopped, young people have stopped reading newspapers. I don't blame them because they know that journalism is dead in this country. And this is one of the major problems that democracy, Indian democracy faces, the collapse of journalism, which is necessary to safeguard the health of democracy. So we can actually stand in the gap, make up at least for a part of this huge loss the country has suffered, insofar as the media fraternity have sold their souls to those who can afford to buy them. And create the sense of hope, affirmation in our midst, that even in the midst of this overall collapse of the media world, we can still keep the people of voice, uh, the, the voice of the people heard. We can be the bearers and the carriers of the concerns of the people. We can keep these issues alive. And as of today, the social media is far more powerful and influential than the so-called, you know, investment-heavy mainstream media. One lone youth called, uh, what is his name, Dhruv Rati, runs a YouTube channel with nearly 30 million to 3 crore subscribers, one individual. And the impact he has on the people of India is 10 times greater than the impact of Republic Channel, new, new, Network 18, uh, what's that, India Today, and NDTV put together. That's a part of social media. Ravish Kumar, who used to work with India Today on the, in, in the Hindi section, runs this channel and he has nearly, nearly two, 20 million, I think 1.7 or 1.8 million 
uh, uh, subscribers. Uh, no, uh, 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 sorry, 1.8 uh, crores, right? 18 million subscribers. Now, think of the think of the influence he has. Think of the impact, and his reports are ten times, hundred times superior factually to anything that you would get from any of the so-called prestigious national channel, national channel uh, uh, hodgepodge. So, the this age of social media gives to us the citizens the power, the empowerment to do our work. When traditional journalism collapses or has become, in the, in the words of General V.K. Singh, prostitutes, journalists become prostitutes, citizens can become journalists, responsible, competent journalists. And let's do that. What is journalism? The function of journalism in a democracy is to keep those in governance continuously reminded of the life of the people, their needs and aspirations, which they're apt to forget the moment they occupy seats of power, because power has its own magic. It makes those who wield power forget the people, even though they say in theory that people are the repository of the power and the leaders of the country governed by the sufferings of the people. In actual fact, as soon as the, the, the spell of governance begins, the people are forgotten. There's no, no doubt about it. Otherwise, this whole problem of anti-incumbency will not even come into existence. The first thing that the leaders forget are the people of the country. Any doubt about it? Of course, they keep uh, you know, the people of India misguided regarding what they do. And hence, they invest very heavily on propaganda. All of this is known to you and I don't have to explain. Therefore, let's take this opportunity seriously. Let's develop this program. Jen Ki Baat. The people have this to say, Jen Ki Baat. Matters of the people, what the people have to say. And this can succeed only if every member of this YouTube Sangamam takes this responsibility seriously and believes in his or her ability to make a contribution that can make a difference. Let's not underestimate ourselves. After all, if you look at the way the camp followers and the uh, cyber uh, shields of the Sangh Parivar BJP combined have become active against me and the kind of intemperate words with which they damn my work, what does it prove? It proves that my work is effective. And that's a good thing. They think that, you know, what the, 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 the attacks that they launch on me would uh, dampen my spirit. It's the other way around. I see it as the illustration, the, 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 the convincing illustration that my work is relevant and it is going home. It is touching raw nerves now and then, and I'm glad if it, uh, it, it is so. And that certain streams of thought, certain concerns, certain issues, certain realities which are apt to be forgotten or poorly or understood or really understood, can be dealt by us. And the kind of discussions that we carry on has a spillover and it, it's affecting the general society one way or another. And as all of you know, I take your responses very seriously. There is not a single response from any one of you that I don't read. I read every one of them and I'm the better off for doing so. That's why I'm saying that I hold all of you and the potential that you hold in great respect. And I'm absolutely convinced that if your concerns can be articulated and made part of the national consciousness, it can do enormous good to the country. And it can certainly compensate for this huge lacuna at the present time, that the whole national debate has become a monologue. Only the prime minister has something to say. The rest of the country is obliged to sit and listen. And this breeds a very unhealthy psychology. And to a large extent, this unhealthy psychology is responsible for reinforcing this culture of intolerance by which dissent is sought to be crushed, which augurs very ill for the health of Indian democracy. So 
if we can take our work seriously, if we can, if we can believe in our ability to make a contribution, we can serve as a healing influence. We say we, the plight of democracy in India, that's the reason why with great excitement, with great hope and eagerness, I announced this series. Please remember the title of the series, Jan Ki Baat. Who will contribute, who will serve as the, uh, the journalists in this program? Each one of you, including me. I will also walk side by side with you and we'll keep our eyes and ears open on the affairs of the country. And anything that we consider to be important and worthy of public notice will be identified and we'll develop our thoughts and we'll put them, put them up for public consideration. And please notice the very encouraging thing now is that the viewership of this YouTube Sangamam now far exceeds its actual membership. The subscribing members, the free subscription, I'm talking about free subscription. Our subscription is to the tune of about 13,000. But some of the videos are seen by 100,000 people, 120,000 people, which means that our viewership far exceeds our membership. That is a very positive thing. It means that the general public has now begun to take the contents, the substance of this new tube Sangamam very seriously. They have expectations of the dialogue that's in progress between you and, you and me and among ourselves, which I believe is of a different class as compared to most of the social media network sites. And I don't say, say this just to pat ourselves on the back. I'm simply stating a fact. You are certainly in touch with other YouTube channels and therefore you're in a position to compare and contrast the contents of our channel, our Sangamam, with other channels. And therefore, you will see that I'm not exaggerating the case. Anyway, so once again, announcing this new series, Gen Ki Baths. Let's try and make it once a week. The Prime Minister has time only for once a month program. That's good. And I once again say, I appreciate the fact that he finds the time to keep in touch with the people of India, though in a very, very limited and highly choreographed manner, uh, so that his dignity and his... Uh, uh, inviolability as a leader is not uh, in any way allowed to be uh, disturbed. Uh, the whole thing is heavily controlled. No one can ask a question to the Prime Minister in a spontaneous manner. Everything is decided in advance as to which question will be asked and who will ask the question and also in which manner, in which tone the question will be asked. Every question has to be asked in an attitude of reverence and respect. And that's the right thing. I have absolutely no problem with it because boorishness does far greater harm to a country than an attitude of veneration. In fact, I would suggest that all Indians develop a sense of veneration, not towards this political leader or that political leader, uh, Modi or Rahul Gandhi. Let us respect, let us, let us venerate life. And when we venerate life, when we respect life, we take each one of us seriously because each one of us is a manifestation of life. Life, I believe, is divine. And that divinity is something that the Indian culture from early times, perhaps before most other cultures, learn to recognize and respect. That's why we do namaste to each other. The meaning of namaste is I recognize and respect the divine element in you. But <clears throat> these things now exist as vague memories. They don't play an active part in the quality of our life. And our aim is to revive these valuable, um, characteristically Indian elements, spiritual elements in our shared life, and to re-articulate them, reaffirm them, revive them, revitalize them, so that our shared life as Indians becomes richer and uh, more conducive to promoting the welfare of citizens as well as ensuring the progress of the country. Once again, please don't forget, Jen Ki Baat, comprising almost entirely, at least 95%, your contributions. So each one of us, each one of you, each one of us has to take this seriously. Please send me your contributions contributions in the form of videos, 
These days when people talk about contributions, they think it's money. I have nothing to do with it. I need your contributions in terms of your thinking. And so many of you, so many of you, so many of you are capable of thinking in profound ways. Some of the feedbacks I'm getting is um, uh, uh, getting are amazing. Amazing is the word. That's my main encouragement in thinking of this program. Jen ki baat. The people matter. The voice of the people matters. And we are taking upon ourselves the duty to provide a forum for the voice of the people of India to be heard. Jai Hind.